Right muckers, well, outside the day, a lovely afternoon, and there's several combines going out and about, uh, making the most of the weather. And speaking of which, uh, earlier on in the week, an old mate of mine um, said, do you want to pop over and have a go on the old Deutz combine? Now, let me explain. The Deutz combine is nice as it is. It's a 1983 model. Um, 12 foot cut, so not huge by today's standards, but you know, big enough in the day. Um, but here's the thing about it that combine was bought new by his grandfather back in about 1983, and they'd had a good year previous, a good harvest. And he said, We're gonna get new combines, and they, they bought that. and uh, Robbie's uncle drove it, and then what happened was it eventually got sold to another farm and not long back uh, a few years ago it came up for sale and Robbie just had to have it it's just one of those things both for you know, a practical very you know nice tidy combine but more than anything else because of the sentimental value because you know uh, it was it was his grandfather's but here's the thing I can remember that combine when I was a kid and um, even when I was older, I can remember that, that machine being still at the farm uh, before it was sold. So, it, you know, for me as well, it is, there's, a, there's a connection there. So, anyway, as I said, he rang up earlier this week and said, do you want to come have a go on the combine, on the old Deutz? He said, we'll get it out. Uh, he'd got his massy Ferguson there, which I think has got a 16-foot table on it. And uh, they'd say the Deutz being 12 foot. So, combined, you've got 28 feet cutting, uh, which, you know, by today's standards is very reasonable. So, uh, yeah, it had to be done. It was just having the chance to drive something that I'd seen as a, as a kid. Um, yeah, I, I couldn't give, that, uh, give up that opportunity. So I think by the time I'd sort of said yes and hung up on the phone, I was already at his. Um, anyway, as I said, it wasn't set up to go and film and do a film opportunity. Um, but regardless, I still grabbed some cameras. So anyway, here's how it went. Okay, so we'll engage the main drum and that engages all the straw walkers, basically everything from here back.
thickness of the crop or the height. You know, you can bring your speed back a bit, lift your reel up or down. That makes a big difference. Coming out of the end, just lift your header up, reel down, bring her all in. There's a case of stopping. John a Martin combine would be on us to hydro.
Oil's not too bad. Then we have a look if we've got any losses. Seems all right there. No big chunks missing. But what I want to just have a look at, back here, back here, actually behind the, the center of the combine, just see if there's any large amounts of grain coming over the back, and there isn't. It's actually very clean, which is ideal. Because you start seeing lots of grain left behind, you're either blowing over the back or you're just missing it. So I'm happy with that, happy with that sample in the tank. And uh, happy there's no big lumps hanging off. Let's have a look at the, see how the engine is. Got a six cylinder joint. Engages. No, not a one. However, the radio still works. 
So you've got to do it by what you see, what you hear, what you feel through the seat. Get a little bit hang up on the reel. You can just pick off off the table. Drop it down, flick it back into the, in the intake over it. What's that? Another one over and done with. Uh, can't wait till next year. So, there we go. Um, I had a thoroughly good time. There's no two ways about it. I mean, to be given the chance to drive like an old classic combine like that is one thing, but to drive one that you know I remember when I was a kid um, is just yeah. I had a brilliant time. Uh, so this video has been a bit of a bonus really because I was actually working on the um, best engines the ones where you guys have said what you thought were the best engines ever built uh, so I'm sort of going through that at the moment um, plus we're doing the part two of the Belarus crawler will it start which as usual isn't proving quite as easy as we'd hoped but ah, that's part and parcel of it um, but again on that video you know, the the will it start and the little getting the little donkey engine going you know you guys the comments again really good and <clears throat> that's what i love i love the interaction there's no two ways about it. That's, that's the part i enjoy really and uh you know i must say again thanks for all the likes on the video it does make a big difference so you know don't forget guys give it the old uh, like and uh that's, that is much appreciated but yeah uh so i can get back to doing these other videos now um so we're going to probably have the best engines ever then we'll do part two of the will it start on the Belarus um, so because once again I'm waiting for some bits there we are as I said it'll be worth it um, and also yeah some of you that follow me on social media on Facebook and Instagram you'll know that I'm uh, I'm bugging around with that old Detroit 671 engine so uh, I'll be videoing and I have been videoing as I've been going through so uh, we'll have a video put together of that so there we are uh like i said um thank you once again for your support don't forget to give the video a like and uh yeah we'll see you on the next one do <laughs> well <laughs>